Samori Podcast. I'm Steve Weiland, Chief Product Officer. Uh, today I want to talk to Jason, um, who had a lot to do with Tolino and uh, you know where it is today, um, about the process that you would go through to get a Tolino workstation, because it's not just as easy as, as picking something off a website, and when somebody does say, I just want to order off the website, I'll take it as it is. We, we kind of uh, try to dissuade people to, to do that, until we talk to the end user. And, and even when we have purchasing agents call us up and just place an order, we, we really try to focus on saying, can we talk to the end user to, to get you exactly what you want? Um, so Jason, I'm, just give me an example. I've, you know I'm a Mac guy, and but I have used forensic computers in the past and, and workstations um, that were PCs and not Macs. So if I was to order a PC today, um, and I just called you up and I said, I just want a badass workstation, what would you tell me? So first thing I'd probably want to know, Steve, and, and hey, everybody out there, I hope everybody's doing good and staying uh, safe and healthy. First thing I'd want to know is what kind of applications are you going to run? What are you doing? Because a lot of people don't know, we don't only build forensic workstations. We'll build whatever kind of custom workstation is needed. We have a lot of experience in other realms. Okay, so what, what if I told you that, okay, I'm a forensic examiner and I use pretty much all the standard tools. So let's just say... I'm using Axiom, I'm using um, some uh, uh, XRY, I'm using for, for cell phones, um, I'm using, I don't know, Griffi. Okay, so so with, under those circumstances, right, we're, first thing we're going to do is make sure you have enough cores for Axiom. So Axiom uses the cores of the CPU heavily in processing. So we'll take that box off first. The next thing that we're going to look at, of course, the, is going to be the video. So you're using Griffi, so we're going to make sure that you have good video and that that video is liquid cooled, right? So that you're able to look through those images, and some of them can be horrific, depending on what you're doing, very quickly without having to wait for any lag. And then the other thing that you talked about is uh, is doing some acquisition of cell phones. So we're going to make sure that. The workstation that you have is able to handle um, the data transfer between there and the drivers that are involved in that. So pretty complicated process that I'm going to try not to make too technical. Okay, okay so basically, so I've always heard that I got to have dual Xeon processors, right? Like I have two server processors. So for this build that I'm trying to do, would I need that? No, you could use it, but you wouldn't use the full potential of it. So at most, you would be future-proofing. You'd be able to get the, the, the same results or better for less using a desktop processor. Okay, so again, I, I hang out with all my other forensic buddies and stuff, and uh, they're telling me i got to have dual Xeon processors. Why, why would you not recommend it in this situation? Uh, because you're, you're going to be dealing with the error correcting RAM and you're also going to be dealing with the way that it handles the memory calls between the two processors. So not to go too technical with it, but you're basically um, putting way too much power in that you'll never use. All right, that makes sense. So I can save a lot of money if I just stick with the desktop, but it's not going to be a problem at all. No, right? not at all. Now, let's say if I was telling you I was using Nuix. Okay, so now we're getting to the point where we're looking at a whole lot of really large data sets and we're looking at a whole lot of IOPS, so a whole lot of memory calls, a whole lot of things going on there where you're sending a lot of instructions off to different places over a long period of time. Absolutely would recommend you go with a Xeon processor. Got it. Two of them or four. Oh, okay, okay. check that out. So now, so let's just say, why should I buy a Tolino? instead of just buying a high-end gaming system? So that you, you already answered the question with the first question, right? You buy a high-end gaming system, you spec it out yourself. There's no one you can talk to unless you've built workstations and tested a lot of forensic tools. And believe me, we've tested a bunch of them here. Um, you're not going to be able to configure it that way. You're not going to have the ability to do all the testing to figure out what works best with those, with those calls, memory calls, and with the processor and the cores and threads. So do you have any relationships with these software companies if so, as far as configuration or how does that work? Do they tell you what to do or do you, you figure it out on your own? So, it, so obviously it's a combination. Um, we figure out a lot of stuff here or can figure out stuff here on our own, but we work very closely with people with all those um, different tools and apps. And, and if we have a configuration that comes up that might not be standard or that might be somebody that's looking to really max out all the way out, we'll actually reach out to the engineers or the designers at those companies and get their input as well. Um, and there are a couple of different companies out there, quite a few actually, that actually have Tolinos and that's what they use for their uh, testing and benchmarking. 
Now, how, how do I know that I should trust you guys? Like, how do I know that you, like, what makes you capable of handling or building or designing a forensic workstation or any workstation for that matter? Like, what, what makes you different from other people? So that's a, another good question to, to ask because everyone that's involved in the design process here at Samuri is a certified forensic computer examiner through IASIS and also a practitioner, right? So we have people from diverse backgrounds, either law enforcement, military, um, civilian that are certified forensic computer examiners and are the ones that actually work with you on your design. So are these guys active practitioners? Do they still work cases? Uh, so yes, we do still work cases, but in a very limited capacity. We're very busy building Tolinos. Okay. So I'll put it this way. I wish I could work more cases than I do. Um, and maybe that'll come this year, but at the moment, Tolino's booming. Got it. So, all right, great. So now, how do I know that I'm getting the best components inside my workstation? And then, and also, like, I mean, I like for example, like, I'm good with, like, paying for quality components. How do I know I'm also getting the best components for the best price? So, so that's a good question because there's a lot of stuff that happens out there in terms of purchasing um, through uh, bureaucracies where the end user is stuck going through a, a purchasing agent or purchasing department and then that goes one more step through to a, a third party that may, that may be required by government regulations to facilitate the purchase. So it, it's really important to know who you're dealing with. So we've been building Tolinos since 2014, um, and we have a lot of Tolinos out there. They're in a lot of agencies, so there's certainly people you can talk to um, that have Tolinos that, that can vet us, um, but it really comes down to the fact that you as an end user have to be very careful and make sure that the components that you're promised are the components that are delivered. Got it, because you can substitute like and and like different generations of, of components, correct? Absolutely, it's it's not like the government orders a hammer and what comes in is a shovel, and anyone can tell that it's a shovel. The government orders a computer; only the end user is the one that will figure out. Oh my goodness, I didn't get the version of the processor I thought I would. I don't have the RAM I thought I was getting, and I don't have the SSDs that I thought I was getting. And all of those can drastically, drastically affect your performance. All right, cool. So let's say we decide on, on a build, like you help me configure a build. What, what happens at that point? What do you do once I say, yes, here's the purchase order? So once we have the purchase order, right, there's some bureaucratic magic that happens and in the back end of the building, all of a sudden an invoice and a build sheet pops up and the team gets started on that. So there's a couple different things that happen at the same time. One thing that happens is we reach out to the end user and get the actual um, engraving that we're going to do on the side panel. So that is one of the things we handle right at the beginning of the sale so that we can put your agency seal on the side of your Tolino. So you can uh, rock that Tolino with pride. So at the same time, what's happening is all the components are being pulled and they're assigned to a builder and that builder has a checklist that they go through and the checklist, I'm, I'm actually have it in front of me here, Steve, is five pages long. Yeah, I can see that and it's got lots of columns on there. So what are the, what is the checklist comprised of? So is that like the secret sauce master lists? Is that the Lego instructions? Yeah, so it is the Lego instructions, and, and it's almost that detailed, although we don't have the marketing money to give you the pictures of the Legos being put together. So in words, we do the same thing. We tell you where every component's going to go, what order it's going to be installed in, and the builder that does that is going to build that and, and fill that checklist out as a living document. So as each part of it's completed, they'll date and sign it. And that'll be reviewed by another builder. So there's a peer review process in place to make sure that every component's put on exactly the same way, pushed all the way in if it fits in a slot, screws lined up, everything. So the the, the, peer, the builders and peer reviewers um, are are they just anybody? Like uh, so, I mean, are they, or do they have to go through a lot of builds before they can get the ability to do a peer review? So, so there is a, so both of those questions are, are are good questions, Steve. There's a process that you go through before you're a builder, where you work with one of our uh, field training officers, for lack of a better term, where you're going to you're going to kind of do the tell, do, show, review method, right? So that that instructor will kind of tell you what you're going to do. They'll do it with you. You'll show them that you know how to do that. And then they'll review work that you did. So that involves building three Tolinos as a team. 
once you've done that, now you're you now you're certified for lack of a better term to go ahead and build your own Tolinos. And you, they they're going to be checked along the way and until yep. is there like a certain number of Tolinos that they have to build on their own successfully um, to be called like a senior builder? So to get to the senior builder level, they have to build 25. Wow, that's a lot. Yep. That's a lot of Tolinos. Yeah, it takes, you know, uh, again, eight hours, right? So if you if you do the math on that, if, if you're a good builder and we're using you, you can get through that pretty quickly um, and, and get to the point where you're doing that. And then past that, you know, I, I guess we have... Um, we have the, the I'm, gonna, I'm gonna call it the one ring to rule them all. We, ha we have a guy that works with us, so we give a little shout out to Devin, um, that is our guy that comes around and actually checks, I guess he trains the trainers, for lack of a better term, and checks and makes sure that everybody is doing the exact same thing. Yeah, and Devin doesn't miss anything. No, he does not. <laughs> He's I, I gotta, very particular. I gotta be honest, I'm kinda glad I stopped building Tolinos before we hired Devin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's kinda, yeah, I actually went through a build with, just to get my hands wet and, and help out, and, and Devin was very particular about how I did things, and I thought I was pretty strict on how things were done. So I was, I was one-upped on that one. But so, okay, so let's say the Tolino gets built now, it's been peer reviewed. Oh, okay, do you shove it in a box? Yeah, no, so the, when I say built, I actually mean built in the, in the actual sense that this is screwdrivers being turned, components being placed in. This Tolino that, that's gone through this process has never been powered on, right? So now we're gonna move to the other side of, of, the, of the building to the lab, and this is where we have a whole nother set of folks that come in. Okay, and what do they do? Like, so what are they going to do with this unpowered toy now? So, so because we're really good at consistency and repeating things that work, it's the same process on that side. We're going to have people that do the installation, and those are people that came through the build process, made it to that senior build level, and then showed that they have more to give, right? And so we get those guys over there on that side and get them the training that they need through the same kind of a process where they work with people, get to the point where they're actually powering the machine on, checking all the specifications in the BIOS, making sure everything's good there, installing the operating system, optimizing that, and then here's the important part, we will also install and set up for you any of your forensic apps that you want us to put on there. Oh, okay, that's, that's really good. And we've learned over time how to optimize those apps set up the caches, the temps, the evidence drives, volumes, raids, whatever, correct? Absolutely. And, and we'll handle things like, uh, put, you know, if you want to get the NSRL database on there, we can handle those kind of tasks for you so that when you do get that Tolino and pull it out of the box, you're literally putting it on your desktop, plugging it in, keyboard, mouse, monitor, and go. Oh, that's, that's, that's awesome. So now, how, how long does it take to go through this, this process of installation and and burn it, I guess. Yeah, so so that's the part that we didn't cover yet. So after all of that's been done and it's optimized and we're happy with it, they'll benchmark the computer so we know where that computer stands. And then it will go through a, a 72 hour burn in process where we put it through multiple tests to stress all the components, the RAM, the GPU, um, the CPU, right? To make sure that everything's right. And this is a good timely place to say, you know, we're using some of that um, burn-in power at the moment to support folding at home, which is doing simulations to help fight the COVID virus. So we're really proud of that fact as well. And thank you, Steve, for finding folding at home for us. Yeah, sure. So um, that's just me being a geek and looking for aliens <laughs> before that. So, <laughs> but um, all right. So the, the burn-in process and stuff, so it's not just for generating heat for the buildings because we refuse to turn the heat up, right? No, but I would be lying to not say that we haven't had Tolino strategically placed around the office on particularly cold days. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with no insulation in his building. Yep. So, yeah, it's a dual purpose, right? But, um, no, so pretty cool with the uh, burning going on. I've seen you guys, and I've seen in the back where, and I've literally tried to take these off in the past, where the boxes that we put like, extra components and manuals and stuff are literally sitting on top blocking the fans. And to me, I was like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, so, so if you walk through there now with me, uh, when I see the boxes sitting on top of them uh, perpendicularly, I'll take and turn them parallel so that they cover all of the fans. Because I want that Tolino, before it leaves out of here, to operate in the worst condition possible, not the best condition possible. Once we've gone through all of that, 
we make sure nothing has failed, we benchmark it again. So we have a final benchmark. So we know exactly how that Tolino operated before it leaves here and moves on. To so the you basically case. have a benchmark when it when, when we did nothing to stress it yep. out. And then you have a benchmark after you try to break it. Exactly. Right. right. So we, we measure those, make sure that nothing's broke that's not obvious that, that we could see in the benchmarks. And then... From there, now that we're done, right, or what I'm going to say is done because we still got to talk about the shipping and packaging. At that point, that's when we make your image. So every Tolino comes with a restored image. It's stored on your Tolino, and it's also stored here. So if by some reason you lose that, we can always get that image back out to you so that you can do a factory reset. Yeah, going back to the testing part, so like, give me an average because I've seen this in the back too. Like we have a lot of RMAs and stuff. How many of those RMAs are from us through, you know, breaking something through testing or making something fail through testing? Um, it's a pretty low percentage because we've gotten really good at what we do and really good at, um, at how we do the burn-in and testing process. But it was a pretty high number to begin with as we started to try and figure out, okay, how do we do this? How do we make sure that we're going to send this out and the video card isn't going to crap out? Two, day, two days into using it, how do we make sure all the RAM is still going to hit, everything's going to be good on it. Um, so we've gotten pretty good at that, but I would say every week um, we're certainly sending back RAM as we check the RAM. There's always There can always be inconsistencies there. That's pretty common. Um, power supplies, coolers are also things that can tend to fail fairly quickly into the cycle. That's why we stress them very heavily and also keep them running for 72 so hours. So what you were talking about and you kind of hesitated was that we've learned a lot about what components are good, what components are not good by stressing these computers out ahead of time before it fails on you. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I know, I know the numbers are down, but I didn't, you know, so that's 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 cool. That's really cool. So we, I, I know that we switch manufacturers in different times or I, you come to me about we're going to go to a different product and you, you All the said... Time. Yeah, about, hey, this is a better one, and this is less failure rate, and so on. All right, cool. So now, shipping. So it's, okay, well, I'm assuming you made the image, it's been tested, somebody gives it a thumbs up. Now now what? Yeah, so, so everybody's done with the exception of, of our shipping department. Um, and so that's an interesting process and work over time. Um, and for those of you that have been with us through the years and continue to order Tolinos, year after year, you know we have changed drastically the things that we do. So, you know, back in the in the early days, we were just using a standard box with shipping peanuts like you could get at your local Walmart. Um, and from there, we have evolved that process down to a science where the box is a custom box. The foam inserts that we put that Tolino in are foam inserts, and I'm getting really close to releasing this, so I'll announce it here first. We are, we're going to be shipping at some point this year Tolino boxes that have handles on the inside so that you can pull that 95 pound Tolino out by the handles on the box rather than having to try and wrestle down in there and grab it out. So, and that is probably a good solid 85 or $90 worth of packing material alone that we use to ship a Tolino. Yeah, I think at some points we were actually looking at uh using expandable foam inserts and crazy stuff. We have right? looked at a bunch of different things, a bunch of different options. Um, we've gone through every shipping company known to man. And we've had our share of threatening different uh, yep. shipping companies and representatives. <laughs> yeah, we, we looked at a, at a spray and insulation that you could actually, actually spray around the box and, and mold into it. And what we've come up with now is a safe method that also allows you to get the Tolino out of the box quickly without having to remove a bunch of internal packing and foam molded insulation and things like that. So this keeps it suspended so that it doesn't have any of that damage from shaking in transit. Keeps it, we put it in multiple boxes so you don't have to worry about the FedEx facility or UPS where it's going down a conveyor belt at a 45 degree <laughs> angle. And so we'll get a little bit into physics because that's you, 45 degree angle, $10,000 workstation that weighs 45 pounds and comes to a dead stop, <laughs> obviously not optimal. So we figured out a way around that as well so that they cannot put those on that conveyor belt. Okay, so just really quick, when you're talking about these boxes and stuff, 
if you do purchase a Tolina from us, make sure you do not get rid of the box. Please just, you know, break it down and, and fold it away just in case you ever do need to ship it back. Right. So, and not just back, right? Because everybody's labs get upgraded. You move your lab. Maybe this is your Tolino. You move agencies, right? It, it, it kind of depends, right? So some of the, um, some of the Secret Service Tolinos can move from agency to agency because they're assigned to the person that uses them, right? So with that, the foam is also important. You need to keep the foam, you need to keep that box, you can break it down like Steve said, and then just reassemble it when you go to ship it and your Tolino will arrive wherever you want it to go in the same condition it left. All right, so how do I know what's happening with my Tolino? Like, is there like a, uh, I'm going to throw a shout out here, like a Domino's pizza tracker? Like, do you do you know what's happening? <laughs> what's happening? It, so funny that you should ask that because, no, there's not a Domino pizza tracker. But I asked yet. for one. I asked for one. Yet. <laughs> so we got to sell a few more Tolinos and maybe a couple more copies of Recon Lab before we can afford a Domino's pizza tracker. However, we have also evolved, um, and for those of you that bought a Tolino from us in the beginning, you probably sent us a purchase order, and I hope we said thank you, and then three weeks later or so, a Tolino just arrived somewhere. From that, we've gotten way better at that, and, and you'll kind of reach the, the email equivalent of a Domino's pizza tracker. So we're going to tell you when it went in the oven. Right, and that's when we're building it. And we're going to tell you that it came out of the oven and it's getting ready to leave. We're going to tell you when the delivery driver has it, and we're going to tell you when to expect him to ring on your doorbell. And then we're going to follow up and make sure that you got it, that it's everything you expected it to be, and also that you get your warranty activated so that we can make sure you get maximum coverage on that baby. Oh, awesome. Now, so we, we kind of went through talking about a forensic workstation, but we've done builds for all kinds of things, right? Just different yep. purposes, not just forensics. Like we do everything from full-fledged servers and have quite a few of them this year oh, yeah. already and, and down to just like really unique stuff, right? So um, video storage and all kinds of casinos. We've, and done, we've done it from, from high-end video storage to, to storage server applications to... Uh, all the way down to just desktop computers. So if, if you want a desktop computer that is a little better than your than your off-the-shelf computer, but you're not going to spend for a Tolino. So in the forensic world, that could be a reviewing station, right? If you if you have investigators that are not that, we've done that in a lot of situations. And then we've had uh, you know other agencies and companies that just want the same kind of quality, and we build those as well. Right. So now another question I get all the time, and I know we talked about this in a past episode about the case and why we have the cases the way we are, but a lot of people are like, yeah, it's just too big. Yeah. Do we have other options if it, like, like we, if the sure. people understand like the cases are cool and then they understand why they're like literally cool. Um, if they, they go, well, that's, it just doesn't fit where our needs are. Can we build something different? Oh, absolutely. So, so if you're just looking for a desktop reviewing station, we're not going to need to get you a double chambered maximum 15 fan cool chassis to put that in right so we absolutely have any kind of option that you're looking for there in terms of different things that we can do up to and including if you want to design your own case and have the time um, we can work with our proprietary case manufacturer to customize your case if you have a specific use yeah so we literally can design custom cases for your needs like absolutely. anything right so that we will not said, get that Tolino in two to three weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that being said, so we we've been playing around like with our uh, uh, some more gives back Tolinos um, with different color cases. If someone absolutely wanted to have like for example, I'm just going to throw this out there a Ferrari red Tolino case, and they want to purchase a bunch of them, can we do that? I would prefer to get the color codes, but if you don't have them, I'll find them for you. But we can. Oh, gotcha. Can. Easy. Yeah, okay. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Gotcha. All right. So um, let me try to think if there's anything else that I would want to know as a Tolino customer. Um, pricing, that, that's the biggest thing, right? You know, um, I, I know we're very unique in what we do and we have our own custom, you know, something that, stuff that makes us unique, right? But how are, is pricing uh, compared to like someone else's? So, so you're not going to be able to beat our pricing, but we certainly challenge you to try. So if you can find a, a similar workstation that's out there that's using the exact same quality components, that's important, um, then my, the price is not going to be beat. 
right? We're, we're optimized for what we do. We have a lot of efficiencies that allow us to do that. And we have always been founded on your principle of providing forensic workstations at, at a reasonable cost for law enforcement. And in turn, we've spread that out to the entire world. We don't have a two-tiered structure for pricing. Right, because it's, it's I mean, coming from law enforcement, it's great to say there's a law enforcement discount, but why don't we just give that law enforcement discount to everyone? Exactly. So, yeah, it just makes things easier. It's less to code in the computer and stuff. It just, and then plus, again, we're, we're, we're here to help as much as we can. So we do, now, let's just talk about that really quick because we always talk about law enforcement stuff. What, what about corporate customers in Tolinos? What can you tell me about that real quick? So we, we have quite a few corporate customers that, that do Tolinos and they're for some interesting uses. Um, but some of our corporate clients, many of the banks, um, we have a lot of banks that come back to us year after year. We have NASA that is one of our coolest customers. We have Intel, the chip maker that has been with us for many years that's used many really interesting cases and has, has kind of got our creative juices flowing too with some of the, some of the things that they request. Um, in fact, Steve and I were talking about one of those builds that we did um, a couple years ago that, that was utilizing some, some really high-end processors um, that, that got us thinking in different directions for things we could apply down to the other one. So all kinds of corporate clients that we work with every day. Yeah, and so like for me, right now, like it's me, I go back and check the plexiglass that we do, the custom plexi, yeah. just to see what new ones that we've collected. Yeah, because it's kind of cool to see like a a major corporation or even a minor corporation, you know, like having their logos on the side of a Tolino. It's just it's just neat, like little. It's almost like collecting baseball cards. Oh yeah, airlines, um, libraries, military defense firms. Banks, you you name it, insurance. Every, yeah. Obviously, everyone's doing doing. So I'm, so I'm just going to throw this after too. I'm still waiting to get a Mickey Mouse one. So <laughs> I want to be able to put Mickey Mouse on the side of a of a Tolino. So so there are a couple. And of, I know they have forensic examiners because I still have that business card. We do. We're so. waiting. <laughs> we're ready. We don't do cold calling, but if you're out there, Mickey, we're ready. We're ready. All right, All right. I think that's about it. The only other thing I would add is, is something that you say every time when you when you talk about the software, right? Which is when the Tolino gets there, the best thing to do, and there's going to be a sticker on it, which I should have mentioned while we were talking about it, is is to, as Steve puts it, the best way RTFM. There's going to be not a full manual, but there's going to be a quick start guide that you use for that Tolino. Take it out and read it. It's really important that you check a couple things like the internal cabling to make sure nothing came loose in shipping before you turn your Tolino on. If you do that, it will fire up every time and you're doing forensics in five minutes. So I think that's all we got for today. Um, don't forget that we're available on SoundCloud. We're available on YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and also Apple Podcasts. All right. Well, thanks, and we'll see you next time.